Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told him what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ,
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray together. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So when artists talk about contrast, they are referring to the technique of arranging opposite elements in order to add a dramatic effect to their work. Light versus dark, small versus large, rough versus smooth. But really, we don't have to be artists to understand contrast. For us, the last several years have been shocking examples of contrasts. A year ago, we were stunned at the difference between our lives then versus what we now understand as the normalcy that we enjoyed in March of 2019. But really, the contrast between today and spring of 2020 is also pretty mind-blowing. Last year at this time, the world around us was locking down. This year, we're opening up. Last year, we knew next to nothing about how COVID-19 really spread, how widespread it actually was how to treat it, how to prevent it. This year, not only do we know about all of those things, but we also have a vaccine. That is quite the contrast that we would have had a hard time even imagining last year. Just as in 2019, we couldn't have imagined how different our 2020 would be. Well, friends, today, Palm Sunday, is a study in contrasts as well. A study in contrasts that people from, I think, any time period would have trouble imagining. Our God created the universe out of nothing, fashioned the stars and planets, sustains every living thing, and knows every hair on our heads. And yet this same awesome, all-powerful God chose to ride into Jerusalem on a donkey. I don't know that we can have a more dramatic contrast than that. Or can we? That Jesus, our King, came to his people riding a lowly pack animal it is certainly a huge contrast, but even more dramatic. Even more dramatic is the fact that he was crowned with thorns and not with gold. He was beaten rather than honored and respected. And he, he who would judge heaven and earth, was himself judged and condemned by the very people created through him. In another of this day's stunning contrasts, what begins as a high note of jubilation and victory, well, on Good Friday, it appears to end in defeat, in loneliness, in death. 
But of course, that is not where the story really ends. And that's not where life ends for us either, this day or any day. But it is also true that we have spent, a good number of us have spent a decent amount of time over the past year pondering our endings, our losses. Everything from the loss of activities that we enjoyed to not being able to gather together for worship or for social activities in person to missing out on hugs and visits with our family members and friends, to pondering the potential loss of our health or our lives. But now, these days of renewed hope can make it feel like we're so close to a return to normal that it's tempting to just barrel on ahead. Open everything up. We don't really need masks anymore. It's very tempting. The American author Christopher Morley wrote many years ago, wrote prophetically that April prepares her green traffic light and the world thinks, go. How true that is this year especially. But we're not there yet. In the middle of all our goes, there is a yellow light, a caution light, a light telling us to take our collective foot off the gas. I think it's fitting that just as the country is ramping back up, we come to Holy Week. Holy Week and its invitation to us to slow down. Friends, Holy Week invites us to pause by the cross, whether it is a cross that we carry, a cross that is carried by someone else, the cross of Christ, but to pause by the cross and wonder, ponder, what it means that God chose death on a cross to unleash the power of resurrection. What word of hope is there for us who have endured so much over the past year but can see an increasing light on the horizon? What word of hope might there be in the cross for those who continue to suffer today. We are invited to watch, to wait, to pray, to adore, that we might claim the contrasting power of our baptism, that we have died with Christ, and that through him we are raised to new life. May this Holy Week bring the blessing of God's deep and abiding presence. And in that presence, may we find the hope of everlasting life. Amen. And now together with Christians from across time and space, Let us confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Friends, on this Palm Sunday, we pray for all in need, responding to hear us, O God, with the words, your mercy is great. O God of majesty, mercy, and might, hear and heed our fervent prayers for the church around the world, that the faithful be nourished by your presence in the word, for bishops, pastors, and all church leaders, that they be strengthened for their tasks of ministry. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For the earth, that it be saved from pollution and disregard, for endangered animals, that they in their habitats be protected. For scientists, that their knowledge of your earth will guide our society's choices. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For peace throughout the world, for an end to terrorism and religious violence, for all elected leaders that they serve the common good. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For the countries hardest hit by the coronavirus, for the fearful and the sick and their families, for medical personnel and hospitals, hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For all who are facing the criminal justice system, for those wrongly accused of crime, for those who are incarcerated, that they be kept safe, hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For those whose needs we know, for those whose needs are hidden, for all who are sick, for the hungry, for the dying, and for all those we name before you now, silently or aloud. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. With thanks for this holy week, with thanks for the support of our community of faith, with thanks for the saints who struggled through life and died in you, we praise your salvation now and unto our end. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend these and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Friends, Christ is the one who redeemed the whole world by his holy cross, and he comes to us wherever we are to bring us the gift of his peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, you are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us join together now in singing our closing hymn, three verses of Ride On, Ride On in Majesty, as found in your order of worship.
Friends, a reminder about our services for this upcoming Holy Week. Our Maundy Thursday service will be virtual once again this year, and it will be posted on Thursday at 7 o'clock in the evening on both our YouTube channel and our Facebook page. On Good Friday, we will join with St. George's for an in-person service Good Friday evening at 7 o'clock right here in the church. No reservation is required, and the service will be live streamed on St. George's Facebook page. So please tune in there, and we will provide a link for that on our own Facebook page. On Saturday, we are, will celebrate our Easter Vigil service. That will be at 7 o'clock in the evening here in the church. That's an in-person service. Reservations are required and can be made using the Sign Up Genius website. There are plenty of spaces left for that worship service. If you were unable to sign up for Sunday morning or want to come to a particularly special evening service for the Easter Vigil. And then on Sunday, April 4th, will be our Easter Sunday service in person here in the church. Reservations are available for up to 50 people, and I know there's not much space left, but you may still be able to get a slot reserved for yourself and a family member. This service, instead of being pre-recorded as we have been doing, this service will be live streamed on our Facebook page as well as on our YouTube channel. I wish you all a blessed and most holy week for this week ahead. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.